Welcome back to another edition of Tennis Picks and Bets. I'm John. You can find me on Twitter at JRTweetsTennis. Today was a pretty rough day. First one we've had in a while, so we'll look to bounce back as round three concludes on Saturday. But before we get to the best picks for the day, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, comment down below with your favorite selections on the day and then head on over to your favorite podcast app and rate review and subscribe to daily fantasy sports picks and bets the mix this time we go with th all three plays on the men's side as opposed to today where we had everything on the women's side we'll begin with carlos alcaraz and jan leonard stroof i didn't give the play within that uh, play the title there just because we have two on this match i'm going to take both minus four games and minus one and a half sets for alcaraz the minus four games coming in at about even money and the minus one and a half sets coming in at plus 105. These are plays I really like just because I was a little nervous heading into his second round match with Alcaraz. I actually took Vasilevsky on a personal level, thinking that the kid may not be able to hold up for a second straight best of five set match. And boy, was I wrong. Carlos Alcaraz looked sensational. Not only did he not look fatigued to begin with, but he finished the match really strong and decisively against Bajlashvili, even in a case where Bajlashvili down a break in the final set, took a medical timeout, something that's commonly used as a cheeky tactic within the game. What does Alcaraz do? He's broken out of that medical timeout and then comes right back and breaks Bajlashvili and then closes out the match soon thereafter. Incredible composure and poise for a teenager. As for Jan Leonard Struff, I will admit, I have been impressed by his play this week. I watched his entire match last go, uh, last round, and boy, was he impressive. His serve was working well, but Facundo Bagnus really worked his own way in. Remember, Jan Leonard Struff played five sets in his opening match here at Roland Garros, and Bagnus, despite Struff playing very solid defense and serving pretty well for at least a set and a half, Bagnus only lost that match 7-5, 7-6, 6-4. Four. Of course, we were on Bagnus, and he got to five all, six all, and four all in each set. Really lost that at the latter at the latter stages, and we lost that one at the margins. I'm comfortable here taking an even better player who is very solid from the baseline, kind of like his idol Rafael Nadal. He can also really open up and hammer that forehand if you leave the ball short or in the center of the court. So we're going to go with the young phenom here who has looked like he has not lost a step despite playing six sets of tennis, which he's usually not accustomed to. So we're going to go ahead and trust him here and take him against the veteran Struff. The second match I want to take is Dominic Kepfer plus five and a half games against Roger Federer. This one comes in at plus 102 odds. And I really like this spot just because once like your Roger Federer's fans, known to be a bit biased. They do like betting him down in the marketplace. For instance, we had Dominic Keffer open on the money line at just plus 225 and then shot all the way up to plus 325, currently sitting about plus 300. You can see that Federer influence in the market, and we're going to look to take advantage. I'm not necessarily going to play the money line, although I do think Kepfer with his style has a chance. He serves pretty well, and Roger Federer in his later years has been known to just try and hold his serve wait till a break opportunity presents itself, and then assert himself when returning. He has not really put a ton of energy in the past few years into his return games, and with good reason. He's trying to preserve his career and stretch it as long as possible. Plus five and a half games looks really good on that front. I also think that Dominic Kepper's ability to angle and hit with a lot of topspin is a distinct advantage here against Roger Federer. Federer's one-handed backhand is a work of art, but if Kepfer can really find the angles from both wings that we have talked about him being able to do, I think we can see a nice one or two set victory here for Dominic Kepfer in terms of being able to take this to four or five. And once we get to four or five sets, it becomes increasingly more difficult to cover five and a half games. So I'm going to go ahead and take Kepfer plus five and a half at plus 102. The final play is another total. I have not been a fan of totals in general the past few years, but this tournament has really presented some nice opportunities. Diego Schwartzman and Philip Kohlschreiber under 33 games at minus 105. I really, really like this play just because Diego Schwartzman has found a groove. He hasn't played the best opposition this week, but because of that, it's allowed him to re get, refine his form, regain some confidence, something he hadn't had this clay season. It's been his worst in quite some time. Philip Kohlschreiber has beaten Fernando Verdasco, who is pretty much close to retirement, and then Aslan Karatsev, who's been one of the best players on tour this year, but he could not find a way to get into a Kohlschreiber service game. He had a ton of issues producing any breakpoint chances in the first two sets, and so is that a concern in this one? Not really. This is a guy who, this Diego Schwartzman 
is a player who predicates his game on returning well. And I mean, at an elite level, he is one of the best returners in terms of break percentage on tour the last few years. And so that should not be nearly as much of an issue as it was for the Russian. I also believe that Philip Kohlschreiber has played eight sets of tennis now. He hasn't played much tennis at all this year, and he's on the wrong side of 30 by by quite a margin. So I believe that this is going to, we're going to see him really fatigue as the, the second and third sets develop. He might be able to keep the first set relatively close, might work his way into a few Diego Schwartzman service games, but I do not trust him to keep every set close or get, you know, win a set outright. I do believe that Diego Schwartzman can get this done well inside the 33 game mark. I'd have it closer to 30 and a half or 31 games. Thanks for tuning in guys. Let's have a big bounce back on Saturday. Again, like the video and subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. We'll see you for Sunday's picks.